Hi, and welcome to Do It Yourself Made Easy. If you want to build the perfect Home Assistant dashboard, you're in the right place. In this series, I'll show you how to use different cards to organize your smart home just the way you like it. And in this first video, we're starting with three essential ones, the heading, tile, and button cards. Let's dive in. So, what are cards? In Home Assistant, cards are the building blocks of your dashboard. They let you display information, control devices, and organize everything in a way that makes sense for your smart home. Whether you want to monitor sensor data, toggle lights, or create a sleek and interactive layout, cards give you the flexibility to design a dashboard that works for you. I'll start by showing you what we can do with the button card. So let me create a new view. To do that, I have to enter edit mode by clicking on the pencil at the top right. Then I'll create a new view. A view is essentially a page in your dashboard that helps you organize your smart home controls. Instead of cramming everything into one screen, you can create multiple views to keep things neat and easy to navigate. There are different types of views to choose from. The default view lays out your cards in a simple grid, while the panel view focuses on a single large card perfect for cameras, detailed graphs, or even floor plan dashboards that give you a full interactive map of your home. And if you want more control over the layout, the sidebar and masonry views offer flexible arrangements to fit your style. I'll leave the default view sections and name it Test and hit Save. Now, to add a new card, I click on the plus button in the section. A pop-up will open with the full list of cards, and I'll choose Button. The first thing I have to do is choose the entity that will be associated with this button. Depending on the entity, the button will have different behaviors. For now, I'll choose the dining room switch as the entity. The name and default icon will appear on the button. I can add a name to the button, and if I add a different name from the entity, that will be the name that appears on the button. I can also change the icon to something other than the default one. I can define whether I want the name to appear on the button by turning off the Show Name option. You can see, if I do this, the name will appear and disappear from the button. Then, I can also show and hide the state of the entity by toggling the Show State button. If I turn it on, it will appear on the button. Now it's off, but if I turn the light on, it will show on and the icon color will change to yellow. There's also the Show Icon option. If I turn it off, only the entity name will appear on the button. You can combine these options to fit your needs. Next, I can change the size of the icon so it fits better in the dashboard. You can see the icon size change when I adjust these values. I'll keep it at 50. You can also assign a theme to the button, which will affect the button's properties based on the theme, but that's a subject for another video. Now, let's get to the really important part of the button, what it will actually do. This is defined in the Tap Behavior option and in the Hold Behavior option. There are several options to choose from. By default, it's set to Toggle. As the name says, it will toggle the button from one state to another, turning it on or off. But this might not always work depending on the entity I choose. For example, if I change the entity to the Living Room TV, this will work when the TV is on and I click the button, but it won't work if the TV is off. That's because the TV needs a specific command to turn on, and I'll get an error telling me that the entity doesn't support that, so keep that in mind. The next option is More Info. This will open a pop-up with the chosen entity's properties, and the information displayed depends on the entity type. For example, if I click on the button now, it will show me the TV's information because that's the entity assigned to this button. In this case, it will tell me if the TV is on, the current volume level, the source, and some more details. But if I change the entity to the dining room switch, the pop-up will just show whether the switch is on or off. The next tap behavior option is Navigate. This allows you to set up a tap action that takes you directly to another view when you tap on the button. This is useful for creating an intuitive and organized dashboard where you can navigate to specific pages with just one tap. 
For example, I can set it to navigate to my remote control dashboard. I'll save it, and now when I click on the button, it will always send me to the remote control page that I've created. Now let's move on to the next option, URL. This is similar to the navigate option, but with URLs, you can navigate to any web page, whether it's inside or outside Home Assistant. For example, if I choose URL, I can add the link to my YouTube page. I'll save it, and now, when I press the button, it will open a new tab in the browser and navigate to my YouTube channel. The next option is Perform Action. This lets you trigger a specific action when you tap on the button. Tapping the card can execute tasks like turning on a light, activating a scene, or running a script. This is great for streamlining your dashboard by quickly controlling devices or triggering automations with just a tap. For example, I can choose from a list of actions I've created, like scripts or automations, or specific actions from entities. I'll choose a script I created that starts playing YouTube on my TV. So now when I click the button, YouTube will start playing on my TV. The next option is Assist, which will trigger your defined voice assistant. When I choose this option, I'll need to configure the assistant to open. Now if I click the button, it will open the assistant pop-up, and I can type in a command. I'll enter Turn On Dining Room. It responded that the light was turned on. Now I'll ask it to turn it off. With Home Assistant's Voice Assistant, if I turn on the Start Listening option, it will activate the voice assistant without me having to say the wake word. The last option is Nothing, which does exactly as it sounds. When you click the button, nothing will happen. It's useful if you just want to display the entity's state, for example. So, when I press the button, nothing happens. In the Visibility tab, I can define if the button appears or not based on a condition. Let me add a condition. I'll choose the Entity State condition and set the Living Room TV as the entity. I'll set it to show the button when the TV is off. I'll save it and click Done. Now in the view, I can't see the button because the TV is on, but if I go back and change the condition to show when the TV is on, and then save it, I can check the view again. And there it is. I can now see the button. Now back to the button configuration. There's the Layout tab. Here I can define the size of the button. I can adjust its width by dragging the width slider. I can also set it to be a full width card by enabling that option. I can also adjust the height using the height slider. There's also a precise mode option. If this option is not enabled, the width slider will add or remove three columns each time I slide it. But if it's on, it will add or remove only one column per slide. And here it is, the giant button I created. And that's all for the button card. Now let's talk about the tile card. The tile card is perfect for displaying your entities in a compact and organized way. It's a great option if you want to create a visually appealing grid of cards that can hold different types of information or controls. The tile card works well when you need to display multiple entities side by side like light controls, thermostats, or sensors. This card is all about simplicity and space efficiency, making it ideal for dashboards where you want to present a lot of data in a clean and easy to read format without taking up too much room. I'll go to my test view and click the Add Card button. From the list, I'll select Tile. Now I can start by defining which entity this tile will be assigned to. Once again, depending on the type of entity, the functionality of the tile will be different. I'll start with the dining room switch. The default name and icon appear in the tile. In the content section, I can give it a different name, and that will be the name appearing in the tile. I can also change the icon, but I'll leave it as the switch icon. Then there's the color option. Here I can define the color that I want the icon to appear in when the entity is in an active state. When the entity is inactive, the icon will be grayed out. I'll set it to green. Now, when I turn on the light, the icon turns green. If I turn it off, it returns to gray. Next is the Show Entity Picture option. If enabled, and the entity has a picture assigned, it will show that picture instead of the icon. The dining room switch doesn't have a picture associated, so nothing happens. But if I change the entity to EWILINK Smart Home Update, I can see the image associated with it. If I disable this option, it switches back to the icon. I'm going to change the entity back to the dining room switch.
I can also hide the state by enabling that option. By default, it's disabled, so the state is always visible. In the tile card, I can choose what I want to see as the state from the available entity properties. This will be different depending on the type of entity. I can select from a list of properties to display. I'll select state and last changed. Now, in the tile, I can see that the light is off and that the last change was one minute ago. I can add all the available properties if I want. Now if I change the entity to the TV, I get different properties. I'll choose state, volume, and sound output. Now in the tile, I can see that the TV is on, the volume level is at 50%, and it's using the TV speaker as the output. Different entity types will have different available options. I can also change the layout between horizontal and vertical, depending on how I want to organize my cards. In the Interactions tab, the Tile card has the same action options as the Button card, but with an extra option, the Tap Behavior and Icon Tap Behavior, which allow different actions for each. I'll change the Tap Behavior to Toggle. Now in the Features section, I can add extra controls to the tile depending on the entity. I can also define the position of the feature, but if I choose Inline, only the first feature will be displayed. Right now, I have the TV as the entity, and the only available feature is the volume slider. I'll add it. Now in the tile, I have a slider where I can control the TV volume. If I change the entity to the dining room switch and go back to the features section, I get a message warning me that the volume slider is not compatible with this entity, so I'll delete it. Now if I check what features are available, I only have the toggle feature. I'll add it, and now I can see the toggle switch in the tile. If I change the entity to an RGB lamp and go to the Features section, I now have more options. I already have the Toggle feature, but I can also add the Light Brightness slider. When I add it, it appears in the tile and I can control the lamp's brightness. Then I add the Color Temperature feature, and now in the tile I can also control the lamp's color temperature. In the Visibility tab, the tile card works just like the button card. I can show or hide the tile based on specific conditions I define. And the same goes for the layout tab, where I can define the size of the tile, just like in the button card. Now I hit save, and here it is, the tile card I configured, where I can control several features of this entity in one place. And that's it for the tile card. Now let's talk about the heading card. This card allows you to compact and organize your controls even further by grouping entities under a single heading. I'll go back to my test view and click the Add Card button. From the list, I'll select Heading. The first thing I can do is choose whether I want it to be a title or a subtitle. The title is larger, while the subtitle is smaller, making it useful for creating different levels of organization on the dashboard. Next, I can define the name and icon, but I'll leave them as they are for now. In the Interactions section, I have the Tap Behavior option, but with fewer actions compared to the button and tile cards. Keep in mind that this applies only to the heading itself. In the next section, I'll get more options. I'll set the Tap action to Navigate and choose the Floor Plan view as the target. Now when I tap the heading, it will take me directly to that view. In the Entities section, I can define which entities I want to include under this heading. Since this is for my kitchen, I'll add all the entities related to it. Now I can see their icons and states right under the heading, but I can customize each entity individually by clicking the pencil icon next to it. For example, I'll edit the kitchen switch. This opens an editor just for that entity. Here I can set a custom name and icon, choose a color for when it's active, I'll set it to red, toggle the visibility of the icon and state, and even select which properties I want to display. I'll choose to show the name and state, and immediately I can see these details appear in the heading card. In the Interactions section, I now have access to all the tap actions, just like in the button and tile cards. I'll set it to Toggle, so when I tap the kitchen switch, it turns the light on and off. And since I set the active color to red, the icon changes when the light is on. Now let's check out the Visibility section. I'll show this in the Fridge Door Counter Entity. I go back to the Heading Card Editor. 
I'll edit the fridge entity and set a condition so that it only appears if the fridge door has been opened at least once today. I have a counter that tracks how many times the door has been opened. Right now, the count is at 2, but I'll reset it to test the condition. Now, I'll add the visibility rule. I select the fridge door counter as the entity and set the condition to above 0, meaning the entity will only be visible if the fridge has already been opened at least once. I hit save and done, and now the fridge entity is hidden because the count is at zero. But if I open the fridge, the entity appears. As I keep opening the door, the counter increases, and it will stay visible until it resets back to zero. Finally, in the visibility and layout tabs, I can also define conditions for showing or hiding the entire heading, as well as adjusting its size, just like in the button and tile cards. And that's it for the heading card. Here are the three types of cards side by side, where you can see their different layouts and functionalities, the buttons, the tiles, and the headings. Each one gives you a different way to control your home, so you can choose the ones that work best for you. And that's it for this video. Today, we explored the button, tile, and heading cards, each with its own layout and functionality to help you customize your Home Assistant dashboard. Whether you want simple toggles, detailed controls, or compact organization, these cards give you the flexibility to design your smart home your way. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like, and if you want to see more Home Assistant content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.